She said, in the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, and she shall be converted, and a period of peace will be granted to the world. So how does the triumph of the Immaculate Heart fit into the prophecy of the end times? To our final interview with Catholic theologian Daniel O'Connor, where we discuss the Catholic view of end times, including the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I'm with Daniel O'Connor, who is a, a philosophy and theology instructor at the college level and has uh, been an amazing uh, classmate of mine in college seminary that we're happy that can help shed some light for us on eschatology, which is the study of the end times, especially from the Catholic perspective. But that paves the way mm -hmm. for an open opening for where we want to finish today, and that is an air of peace. This is what we hope exactly. for, an air of peace, or some would say the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. A Eucharistic reign, a reign of the divine will. There's many ways to refer uh, to even it. Even the triumph of divine mercy, yes, right? Uh, triumph of divine mercy, absolutely. Okay. Now, that prepares the way for the second coming of Christ. Exactly. So we're bringing this all together. That's why. This so all fits perfectly. Let's pick up where we left off last week, talking about the Antichrist now will be killed by Christ himself through a breath. But then, again, happening kind of with that three days of darkness are, are different. But then what does that open the store to? Let's talk about this era of peace. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about from the Antichrist to this era of peace. Well, the world will have been purified through the three days. The chastisements that have already begun, at least yeah. in a minor sense. And the great chastisement. The great the, 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 the anti Antichrist after and the great the, yeah. right. So we've got minor chastisements that we're probably living in right now, and they will increase after the warning Antichrist. But then the three days of darkness, the grand finale of the chastisements. Wow! The world will be wiped clean. I mean, I don't mean wiped bare. I mean wiped clean of evil from that, of ugliness, of sin and error. There will all of that will be cast back into hell where it belongs. And we pray that as many souls as possible will be spared that because we don't want to see anyone in hell. Yeah. But, now, is this the time that the Satan will be also he'll be chained, yes. chained into hell? Mm -hmm. But what about this thousand years where he's chained and then he's released? And this is one of those aspects of Revelation that I would say has multiple valid interpretations. We have the understanding of Satan's chaining as referring to the whole era of the church. Church, as yes. indeed it does. So, and then, you know, of course, Christ changed Satan with his sacrifice on the cross. Satan cannot roam as freely as he, since the Will this January. usher in the but era of this peace? this will be this new, uh, this additional understanding, the clear sense of Revelation's thousand years, I think will be indeed the era of peace where Satan is more fully chained than ever before. Wow. He cannot roam the earth at all. No more influence. Okay, on. so Daniel, does that mean that the, again, I know a lot of this we have to emphasize is not dogmatic right. church teaching. Right. Okay, this is what you have learned, I have learned through our Catholic uh, formation, what we understand it to mean through through blessed, through prophecy, in addition, of course, to Scripture. But does this mean that now that will pave the way for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart? Yes. Okay, and what Our is the triumph of the it. Immaculate Heart? Our ladies, she promised us at Fatima and so many other places that her Immaculate Heart would triumph. That will and there'll be an era of peace and an era of peace. That was a promise. Yeah, that wasn't one of those things where Our Lady says, "If blank, then blank." <laughs> There's a lot of things <laughs> that aren't said. Yeah, there, yeah, this wasn't. This is not. She said that will happen. It will happen. Yeah. So that means now uh, th that means that we need to have just complete confidence and trust that this is going to happen. Which is why all of this stuff we've been talking about for a few weeks now is a message of hope. Yes, that this triumph will happen. Yeah. So tell us real quickly, what will we see in the triumph of the Michael Heart? Will the world be as we know it? Will it be glorified? Will it be changed? Or does that come later towards the second coming of Christ? Well, it certainly won't be heaven itself. The be it, and that's an error we need to bring up, is that when you bring up end times with some uh, evangelicals, fundamentalists, they have this idea called millenarianism, mm -hmm. which is an error in the Catholic teaching where Jesus will physically, visibly reign on earth. And millenarianism, because we will never have the physical, visible reign of Christ until heaven. And any benefits that would only come from that come confirmation and grace, yeah. uh, like inability to suffer, absolute inability to sin, that's all for heaven alone because that's only flows from the beatific vision, okay. which we'll never have on earth. So no millenarianism, no dispensationalism. Dispensationalism is another evangelical thought where just as the New Testament dispensed of the juridical precepts of the old, that we'll have yet another one 
at the millennium. Now, the rapture, I don't know of any specific magisterium denouncing it as a heresy, but it's, I have not read of a single authentic Catholic prophecy that tells us that there will be a rapture Especially in time. the passage in the Bible that says he will come on the clouds, mm-hmm. which our non-Catholic brethren point to. We believe too, but that means exactly. at the end times. Exactly. Not and this midway point. <laughs> right. That's not, that's, yeah, that's not like the warning or anything like that. The passage itself refers to a personal presence of Christ, which from which we can deduce that it's not like the breath which he defeats the Antichrist with. It's not like a warning, a coming in grace. It's his physical presence that this rapture will entail at the end of time. When he comes again at the end of time, that's in the flesh, and that's only at the end of time. We can still count on divine protection during the chastisements of the Antichrist. uh, And I'm thinking of a passage in the Divine Mercy Diary even where Faustina was praying the chaplet, and it stopped this big storm, and, and she was told just how many chastisements can be prevented through this. No. So we don't need to bank on the rapture, us being physically brought out of the earth to be able to endure the times of the chastisements and the Antichrist. We can count on God's grace, even if the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike. Primarily through the sacraments. Exactly. He's already ah. reigning in hearts that live as living Eucharists, as Father Kosicki taught, which I'd love to get to in a moment. But he wants that for the whole world. He wants to, a Eucharistic Not just reign. Catholics. Not just he wants it. To, he wants everyone to become wow. Catholic, and then he wants yeah. to reign over the whole world. Wow. So we will not see him face to face until heaven. The beatific vision, all that's for heaven alone. But the kingdom on earth is a Eucharistic reign, and that's the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, the triumph of divine mercy, the reign, the fulfillment of the Our Father prayer. He's going to reign through the ministry of priests, especially through the Eucharist. That sin and, and error and, and suffering, I was, death, obviously, still that, all is still there, but in a completely different sense. In a new in understanding. In a triumphant way. In a yeah. new understanding. Exactly. We see the purpose of it. Exactly. Okay, now, Daniel, does this then pave the way for the second coming of Christ? Then we will be ready. Wow. As Revelation says, wow. it's compared to a bride going to her wedding. Heaven is the wedding, the eternal wedding feast. Mm-hmm. So this is an incredible concept. But yes. now you're the bride as the church. The bride is ready, right? Mm-hmm. She's spotless now. Right. You don't go to your wedding filthy and dirty and yeah. sick. You, you are fully prepared. And that's earth is supposed to be a saint making factory for heaven. That's what it's supposed to be. If you walk around your nearest city, is that what it looks like? I, I, I don't think there's a city on earth where the answer to that is yes. Mm-hmm. But that's what God wills for the earth, that it become a saint-making factory for heaven. And we don't know how long this triumph, this era will be before he comes in the flesh at the very end, but it'll be long enough so that we're ready for that. Well, being right, there'll be a new world, a new heaven, it's a new all in earth. preparation now. Yeah, yeah. And so it's nothing to fear as long as we are staying in the yeah. state of grace. It's the opposite. These are the most exciting times in history to be alive. We need to Thanks. bring that message of hope, trust in the divine mercy, living in his will, living the Lord's prayer. Bring that to the world. You can have more success with that more quickly today, I believe, than ever before. And the best way to become a saint. Exactly. Because there's so much grace available. Mm-hmm. All right. Daniel, fire, God Thank bless you. Thank you for having me. It and was an honor. We're very thankful that you could take this time to spend with us. 